only dude here. I found this little Ford Focus. The guy in my church, he was selling it on Marketplace and I saw his name come up and that he was selling it for a really good price. So I messaged him immediately and said, hey, I am interested in this car. Tell me more about it. So he called me and we talked about it and I said, all right, uh, can I come out and take a look at it? Went out, looked at it. I was sold on it. It was the AC works. Everything was working fine. So purchased the car, brought it home, sat it. And then the, uh, today was out getting all the stuff transferred, the, the title and it got insurance and everything on it. Kim wanted to take it out today to go to get her nails done. She didn't even drive it up the, the, the alley from behind the house and it was smoking, it was blowing out heat and we couldn't figure out what was going on. It wasn't blowing out AC. I called the guy that I bought it from, my buddy, and uh, they're at church and uh, went over to his house to kind of check it out because it was running. They When I take it out and I drive it and it started moving, the AC would kick on. When you set it alight, it got hot again. To back up a little bit, I wanted to kind of tell you that I, what happened before. I had bought a Ford Fiesta, not even three, not, not even a month ago. Let's say it was a month ago for Madison. Same type car as this Ford Focus. The guy lives not even a mile away. Drove it home, did the exact same thing this car just did. It sat in the driveway, it overheated, the AC stopped working, it just sounded terrible. Had the guy come over, check, check it out, look at it. He couldn't figure out what's going on. The fan wasn't kicking on. So with the fan not kicking on, that means the air's not going to work. That means the car's going to overheat when it's sitting there, just sitting there idling, especially on in the, the warmer weather we've got going on. That guy didn't know what was going on. I had no idea because I, the relay looked like it was fine. He decided that... He felt bad and he's like, if you want, I'll give you your money back and you can have the, and I'll take the car back. I agreed to do that because at the same time, there was, the transmission was, was fluttering a little bit. And then come to find out with the, these, these particular cars, these focuses, the um, transmission has that TCM uh, going bad. So I count my blessings that the guy was willing to take it back fine. But I literally didn't even drive that car a mile to the house and it decides to die. I literally didn't drive this car more than a mile from my buddy's house and it did the exact same thing. The guy I bought this from, just so you know, he ended up having the same thing wrong with the transmission in this. The TCM went bad. They had a recall on it. He said he took it in the dealership uh, here in town and they swapped it out and it continued to act up. The way he explained it to me, which I didn't know this, but these transmissions on these focuses are like manual transmissions and that TCM is kind of the clutch controller or whatever. So it literally is a manual transmission with these automatic clutches uh, shifting it and that's, so they call it an automatic. <sighs> Must've been one of the worst designs they ever came up with They're having all kinds of problems with them. So he ended up having to get a whole nother transmission because the TCM controller or whatever, that controller wasn't problem the transmission was going bad it has a transmission that's probably got you know i think he said probably like ninety-five thousand miles on it or somewhere like that so hopefully that will last for the duration of me owning this vehicle the engine stop notch nothing has ever been bad about these engines i haven't i can't find too many bad reviews on them maybe you have and if you have you know put your comments in there and let me know what you, what you've ran into but with this air conditioner so my wife is coming up the driveway and she was literally coming up and there was smoke coming up through here. Now there is somewhat of a little bit of a leak out of this, this reservoir and it was dripping. So that could have been what was smoking, but it smelled more like an electrical thing, but whatever. The compressor sounded like it was falling apart. Like the bearings were bad. It was just, it was just, it sounded terrible and it was blowing out hot air. But at the same time, the fan wasn't kicking on. So like I said, we were standing in the driveway when him and I were talking about it. And we, we were talking about how we we're just going to have to go to a junkyard and find another compressor. And all of a sudden, the reservoir started like steaming. And I walked over, looked at the gauge, and I was like, dude, this thing is on fire. Turned it off. It was just overheating. So now we're both dumbfounded because we're like, well, we're standing here. And this fan hadn't kicked on the whole time we were standing here. 
So we open up the box on here and we start looking at the relays and you have to have the manual, the book to go through what all the relays are. So I think it was this one. So he pulled that relay out, put another one in there. Fan still didn't kick on. So he had a computer, he hooked it up uh, that could read all this stuff and it spewed out all kinds of different uh, codes or whatever. And um, so he started checking the fuses. Well, this fuse right here, this, uh, let me zoom in here. This fuse right here, which is a 10 amp fuse, uh, was blown. When I got the car from him, he told me the engine light was on and he thought it was like an oxygen sensor or something like that, which he did replace or some other sensor that was causing the engine light to come on. But when he f looked at that fuse and what it would controlled, he was like, well, maybe that's why the engine light was on. So we replaced the, uh, the fuse, put it back in there and, um, and the, the engine light went off. But when he hooked it up to the computer and we pulled that fuse out and replaced it, it actually came up and showed that it is, it controls the fan controller, I think is what he called it. And so when that fuse blew and the engine light came on, the fan went kick on, which he replaced an O2 sensor a couple weeks ago. And he thinks maybe something tripped to make that fuse blow. So even though the relay was working fine, there was power getting to it, that fuse had blown and, the, and what controls it didn't, wasn't working. Changed the fuse, turned it on, fan kicked on, engine light went off, AC's working fine. He was, he actually pulled some pressure out of the AC because it, because that fan wasn't kicking on, it was, it was running at high pressure. So he literally just opened this up and, and took some of the Freon out of there to reduce the pressure, but that didn't change that compressor. It still was acting awful. So we just figured that the compressor was bad, but no, it was just a fuse. So the lesson on this is if you have a Ford Focus or one of these type of systems with the little, uh, four cylinder and um you ended up you end up driving and it seems like the ac works but when you're at a light it doesn't check the fuses because if that fan isn't running then it's not going to cool and at the same time if you're sitting idle too long your car is going to overheat so that fuse was the whole problem all this time it wasn't a relay it wasn't the compressor it was just that we ended up putting it in like i said he added a little bit more free onto it and this thing drove like a dream all the way back home no problems at all so counting my blessings we got a car that actually works i feel like the last one that, that had the same problem with that transmission on that other car i feel like that was a blessing god was just making that happen the only thing i could say about this one and why the lord would allow this one to do the same thing was to just to learn a lesson that he had his hand in that other vehicle because he knew that we were going to waste three thousand dollars that's what the car was was worth i spent three thousand dollars on it this one here I picked up for 1800 and it, it runs excellent. The guy I bought it from is basically a mechanic and he knows a lot about stuff. So I trust him and knew that I was buying something that, that was worth my time. So that's it guys. I just wanted to get on here, show you the new car that we got. It's not the coolest thing, but for a first time car for Madison, it's perfect. I'm glad we figured out what was wrong. Now all I got to do is just kind of get it cleaned up and, and uh, polish it up a little bit. It does need a new windshield. I'll, get, I'll just go ahead and show you. It needs a new windshield. So I'm going to just call, uh, um, I'm just going to call Safe Light and have them come out and look at it. But the interior is in good shape. Just needs to be clean. Maybe get some seat covers for it. It's got 164,000 miles. It's still uh, got some life on it. The exterior is in pretty good shape. You can see where... Uh, it, it did get dinged in a little bit with the hailstorm we had here not too long ago, but who cares about that? But for $1,800, there's a scratch right there. Someone looks like someone keyed it or maybe they scratched it with their bike or something. But yeah, for $1,800, not a bad starter car for Madison. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Please make sure you smash that like button for me. Also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I'll have more videos like this and and uh, our experiences we have with vehicles and everything else. We're getting ready to go camping next week. I'm uploading uh, videos of our trip that Kim and I went down to Virginia. Looking forward to seeing uh, what you guys think of those. Also hit the bell icon so you're notified of new content as I upload it. All right, well, that's gonna be it. I will catch you on 
the next one.